Welcome to our first ever episode of Level of Detail, brought to you by the Games Development Department at Staffordshire University. My name is Professor Chris Hedlund. I'm the Head of Department and a Virtual Reality Researcher. We've created this to help you get to know us, talk about the latest in games, and give you an insight into our activities here, the largest computer games department in the UK. Throughout the series, we'll also be talking all things gaming, playing some of the latest and most iconic games from a variety of platforms, and inviting a range of guests to get their insight to what we believe is the most exciting industry in the world. The level of detail has been recorded out of our dedicated eSports hub on our main Stoke-on-Trent campus, and over the next episodes, we'll be linking up with our team of over 80 specialist games lecturers and some of our nearly 1,500 game students. For this episode, we're going to be taking a meander through the metaverse, or playing Fortnite. But before then, I'd like to introduce my colleagues, David and Rach. Hello. Hey. Let's play some Fortnite. OK, ready up. Bad. Quick question, ready up, which button's that? <laughs> <laughs> Triangle. Triangle. You, you, Triangle. You're ready up, you're ready up. <laughs> we'll be fine. It's we'll be fine. fine. So, while we're loading, let's start with a quick question. Mm. Why do you think Fortnite has become such a phenomenal game? Oh, so many, there's so many reasons, isn't there? Um, to start at the simplest, being free doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> it's, That's it a good point. You no, know, it's easy to get into. Um, you can, anyone can get started on it. Like the, the way that they've sort of monetized it is, you know, brilliant. Like you pay for your, you know, the aesthetics mm. if you want it, but you don't have to. To get you know, to, to actually play, and it's not the sort of game where you can buy things to get an advantage. You know, it's where if you buy things, it's purely aesthetic. So I think that just keeps it nice and fair. So you know, that's not even talking about the gameplay. Like that, that ju just at a top level like that, I think. No, I was going to say that I agree mm. with that. It's like no one's got an advantage over anyone else, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you just go in, and everyone starts out the same, and has to just get the same weapons and stuff, and. You know, yeah. just go out there. You can get advantages for, like you said, customization and stuff, but that's it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that aesthetic side. So, Rage is an artist. Yes. What about this art style makes it feel, I mean, it's quite accessible. Mm -hmm. It feels quite bubbly. I mean, you, you, you were playing a game where you were shooting people, but somehow it feels more friendly than that. Yeah, I think it's quite colourful, isn't it? Like, the whole, it's very, very colourful. I mean, the weird thing is, and I don't know how many people know this, but it actually started out as a horror game. Um, so it was like a horror survival with zombies and you, like one of the most iconic things that they had was um, this zombie that had like a, it sounds gross, but it's skin for a hoodie, um, which I thought was really cool. And apparently it's like a game mode um, now that you can play in Fortnite. But I think for me, one of the main things is the simplification of it. Um, mm. And they do something called planarization, which you see a lot in the characters and the environments where everything looks a little bit low poly, essentially. Um, and that's a good thing about stylized games as well, which has helped Fortnite, is they age very well. Um, if it looks very realistic, it doesn't tend to age that well because it's limited by things like the, you know, the engine and things like that, mm. um, the textures and stuff. But yeah, Fortnite just ages really well. So I think the planarization looks really good. And I think that there's an element to that where, <clears throat> you know, we've got a. Uh, I, th I think some of that makes this really accessible is the fact that you can play on so many different platforms. Yeah. Yeah, and having sure. that kind of, you know, that soft detail, that um, that stylized mode means it it doesn't necessarily look weird if you have to lower the graphics quality yeah. on, on, you know, it's a on a quite a platform. It's a story of like, all, you know, so many popular games. Like you look at you know, Minecraft, you look at, you know, game back, it's still going obviously, like World of Warcraft. All of it stylized, all of it runs on a range of, you know, like some low end, low end uh, systems. Just means more people can play the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, I think we've dropped miles apart from it. <laughs> oh, <have we? laughs> I'm already in a fight with someone. Well, you've won. Oh, how did I, I win? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I've uh, knocked someone as well. Oh, no, I, you're I next wasn't to expecting me. to win that. I'm going to be honest. To me. I'm next to you, Rage. Yeah, someone is. I know Chris is next to me. I've got no idea. Right. We're just getting shields. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Who is this fellow? I've. I've Accidentally just killed. Picked him up. What, what's probably worth mentioning as well, just like when it comes to the quality of us playing this game, Rachel's very good at it. Oh, <laughs> nice, <thanks laughs> me, me and you haven't played that much of it, and I certainly haven't played it with a pad. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, mm. d I don't play much PlayStation at all. Oh, do you not? No, no, no. I I, I'm much more of a PC player. That's my excuse. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so let's get that in. Um, 
I don't know where you are, DJ. I can't I'm, see I'm you. Oh, I see you, okay. You can, can you see me? I can see your name in the far distance. Am I running away or towards you? You're, I wish I could see well, that we, we don't know, do we? Um, okay, so, back, back to our topic, the metaverse. So, one of the things that uh, we've been doing a lot in, in Fortnite is, is these kind of big events, you know, everything from sort of pop um, festivals mm -hmm. to. I think there's even talks and things. I mean, For sure. why why do you think that works in this platform? Um, I mean, well, first, it's it's interesting because I think like the audience was there first. Yeah, you've got this massive player base. Um, oh, I died because I'm talking. You see, that's my that's my <laughs> excuse. Um, you've got this massive player base anyway, so that I think that gave them the, the opportunity to go and sort of try, like you know, what, so what happens if we use this? This engine, this game, to like host a conference, not conference, um, um, like concerts concert is the yeah. word I'm after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A concert, you know, and I think if they tried it the other way around, someone, you need that player base there, yeah, you know, yeah. first and foremost, that accessibility uh, and lots of people to join in. But yeah, it's just. Uh, so I, I wonder if it, I mean, <coughs> so players tend to play with their environments, right? And I think one of the interesting things about the, the lobby in. Um, Fortnite is the fact that you can do things in there. So yeah, mm. people yeah. were communicating, people. And I wondered if, if if it just evolved naturally, people had a space where they could be creative and they were, you know, unsurprisingly creative with it. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, it's a, it's a creative creative game, isn't it? Like in the normal mode, we're playing the mode where you can't build anything. <laughs> because, I mean. Because to be honest, we're not very good yeah. at this. <laughs> It's got constant updates, it's like you're saying, they're hosting all these events and stuff, but it's not like a one-time thing, they do it a lot, mm -hmm. and they update it all the time, I mean, it's got seasons, but, I mean, they've got good links as well, I presume they've got a lot of licensing and stuff with different, um, like, IPs and things like that, and I think that attracts new players to the game as well, then, which, I think they do all that really, really well. Oh, that, I found that really interesting, actually, because I'm someone who's been out the loop with Fortnite for the last year or so, and, like, so when I went into the store when we started looking at this the other day, mm -hmm. Like the amount of stuff, like the amount of, like you say, sort of uh, IPs and yeah. you, know, you know, other characters from other games and like franchises and stuff that are there, like it's just, just exploded in, um, in like you know, it's outreach, it's massive. I think it's one of those things as well that games have to do really well. It's that retention of your current players, but like attracting new players. And when a game's been out for so long, and like people know what it is, they know about it, they know how to play for it, sure. they know if they like it or not. Like you've got to find a new way to get yeah. them back into it, haven't you? So. No, that's it. Absolutely. I feel like Chris is causing chaos. Right, I'm gonna bring you back to life, Deej. Oh, I <laughs> no, mean, maybe I'm. Let me see. Don't go out your way. <laughs> <laughs> the um, yeah. I think at the tail of the tape will show that I had trouble getting into a door and then I died. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So. Again, talking about the metaverse, there was a recent Forbes article that said game design at staffs is one of the best places to learn e uh, metaverse skills. Deej, as a, as a games designer, as a technical games designer, mm. why do you think that is? What, why is games design going to become so useful? Well, I mean, what, if take, take Fortnite as an example of metaverse, then, right? you know, and it's built using Unreal Engine. Um, you know, and the, the, there's, there's these big games engines that are available for everyone to use at the minute, and they're free to get started with, you know, the free to download, Unreal Engine, Unity, and, um, you know, one of the things that, one of the things that we will, we, we cover on the game design course is going from, starting from scratch to becoming an expert in Unreal Engine and Unity as well. So, that's not to say, you know, in a couple of years you'll be making something as complex as Fortnite, you know, with all that multiplayer side of it in there, but, you know, we teach the use of this engine and we teach it, you know, really, really well. Really, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it's a great introduction to get people on this route. And working with Unreal Engine, like I say, it's what it's what Fortnite's made of. You can expand on everything that you saw shown in those three years to start making stuff in a similar vein to this. It's a very expandable engine. God. Am I? Well, I I'm really struggling. I've managed to find myself on the wrong side of the. Uh... Live. I've got two yes. people on me and half of them are health left. Oh, okay. I did it. And did somehow I just managed to get an assist, so I'm <laughs> Good stuff. Did you bring me back to life and I I'm about died? to. Like, oh, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no right, okay. um, I so thought I might have missed it. Came after me. So, I mean, again, go back to the metaverse. Mm. Why, I mean, how do you think it's going to impact the world? And, and do you think it's going to be interesting? I mean, 
Rach, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in your uh, perspective. Because, I mean, one of the things that we are looking with the metaverse is how people choose to represent themselves. You yeah. know, you, you yeah. can you know, effectively completely reinvent yourself as a, as a different avatar. And, and mm -hmm. how do you think that's going to change the way that we do things? So I guess that, that we were talking about this before. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not that like well versed on the metaverse, if you like. Um, so I think it'd be good to just get a background of that just for people watching as well. Um, so if you want to explain that, and then I can explain my point. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, I mean, we have literally just jumped straight into the metaverse. So I'm really explaining what it is, and, and that's a, it's a good call, right? It's, um, it's not something that people are encountering all the time. So I suppose the metaverse, the easiest way to think of it is the way people were talking about cyberspace back in the 80s you know it's, it's, it's a uh, I mean indeed you'll remember the 80s it was a oh, wonderful time yeah great <laughs> so um, a lot of mistakes the whole thing in uh, with the metaverse is this idea that you can effectively live a second life mm -hmm. and that you can do things in that virtual space that you know maybe isn't possible or, mm -hmm. or maybe live out some fantasies or um, I mean, you, 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 you just mentioned Second Life. Do you remember the, the game from, uh, the game called Second Life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, old, so it's yeah. arguably one of the first full metaverse. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, this, this, and like you say, referencing stuff from the 80s, like it's, what was that film? It's like Lawnmower Man <laughs> and all that kind of thing. Like, you know, the, the, the concept well. isn't, the concepts, concept isn't new, but it's just like, it, it feels almost like the technology is getting there now to make it. So more and more games are bringing more and more people together in a single game environment, yeah. you know, socialising and things like that. So we're seeing more and more of it. And I think one of the interesting things about that, right, is is we are. Oh, I'm very nearly shot a robot. Um, one of the interesting things. All these concepts aren't aren't new. Mm. Like you know, we're talking about. Um, virtual reality a lot these days but I mean virtual reality was out in the 80s it just didn't really take off because honestly it wasn't very good I'm sure and now we've got to this position where the technology's moved on has caught up and it's made a lot of this stuff possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how that's I think someone's shooting at me oh yeah oh, hello someone's, someone's uh, shooting at Rach yeah I'll just I'm 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 right behind you <laughs> I took him <laughs> out a of shotgun I think <laughs> right Oh, it's not a shotgun. I've got to ask, how do you actually aim? Aim. Yeah. Left, L2. <laughs> These oh, PC players, eh? Not, and the reason I'm not sort of laughing at it is because I've only just figured that out myself. <laughs> so, you know, I'm biting my tongue. Oh, there's someone behind me, though. Uh oh, I, I'm very nearly dead. So I'm going to dry, run nearly away. Nearly being the operative word. But I guess in the whole idea of, oh, the storm's coming in, the idea of people having like different identities and stuff, I think. Is it just another way for people to do it as well? Because it kind of links into like um, I can't remember like common hero games where like you know like Spider Man like he was a normal person and he lived a normal life and just by chance he became Spider Man. And he's going doing all this cool stuff and just another way for people to live that kind of like oh what would I do if I could do anything sort sure. of thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh no. But, I mean, something I get asked quite a lot is how how will the metaverse change education? And I think mm -hmm. the, the reality is a lot of us we, we don't know. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like the internet. I mean, a lot of what the visions of people thought was possible with the internet didn't really play out. Mm. You know, and oh, it's, yeah. it's how we've ended up using that technology has is, is obviously evolved with time. I mean, what I don't think will happen is I don't see a world where people are jumping into metaverse for lectures. No. no. For example, yeah, because yeah. it doesn't really add any utility over... Um, Okay, so that's not that's not reverse. Oh god, you've got a car already. <laughs> um, so I, I'm on fire and I'm dead. Okay. Well, <laughs> that escalated quickly. Both, both at the same time, <laughs> I drove a car into what I think was a propane tank. Ah, that'll happen. It went terribly. Famously <laughs> explosive, aren't they? Propane tanks. We're on our way. Um, kind of see you. I got panicked. I got I got caught up in the purple fog. Got panicked. Ran around in a circle. Lost my bearings. <laughs> um, where, I'm going to go this way. If you, can you see our names at the bottom? Look. Absolutely oh, not. Go. Oh, I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, your eyes that bad? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not brilliant. <laughs> this is like an eye test for me a little bit. <laughs> oh, I can't, I'm trying to spray you. It's I'm, not, heading uh, towards, I'm heading towards. I'm heading towards you. I'm heading towards you. That's annoying. So, one, 
one of the things that always amazes me about staff, so, I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, I've been here for, ooh, well, it feels like forever at this point, but <laughs> since December, right? Um, what always amazes me, whenever we start talking about a game, is how many of our students are actually already working on that game. Oh, yeah, and I'd for sure. I'd be really surprised if we don't have students working on Fortnite. Yeah, that's it. I, I was thinking about this earlier, actually. Yeah, we were and I couldn't, yeah, we, we were, I couldn't recall the specific name of Fortnite. Um, but, yeah. I want to be on the other side of this. Well, we've got students working on a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> I can think of everything else. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of other things. Um, is that a friendly car? Or any no, of you want to call? Please stop for me, Chris. I just want to. I want you oh. to drive me around. Just as and I want to bother people. I've got no idea how a reverse. Just. It's your analog stick. Everything's controlled with your analog stick. So, like, if you want to go forward, backwards, it's all controlled. Like oh, that. I, it's really I, stupid. I've been pulling R two. It's really stupid. The fog, drive. It's really stupid. Uh oh. That's, that's a tree. <laughs> so, backseat drivers. <laughs> Run the fog. That's a tree. There we go. We're out now. No, this I, I think, nice. Do you know what? I think we're actually doing all right. Yeah, we, we're we're, we're not dead. Last 15. Most. I've got 13 kills, so I'm not doing too bad. You've got 13 <laughs> yeah. kills? I have no kills. I've got no kills. <laughs> yeah, I'm carrying and the team. This it's is okay. why we invited you along <laughs> So, oh, <clears throat> Deej is a technical designer. Yes. What are the challenges of building a game like Fortnite? Oh, I mean, there's... The, the, with um with a battle royale style game, there's a few sort of these games these days, and I mean, you've got you've got various things you've got to deal with. Obviously, hundred players, ish, you well, know, I'm, in I'm, a game. I'm definitely dead now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. Hundred players, whether they're spending most of the time crawling on the floor or shooting each other, yeah, you've got a hundred players. So you know th that that requires quite a lot of managing. You want to think about like, the performance of the game. And like a big open world like this, performance is a big thing, you know, because this isn't like a small map, you know, well, it's not like a, it's not, it's not a map where you've got like, you know, c controlled indoor places that are all linked just by a few doors. Mm. It's big open space. But what they actually do with the level design, which I quite like, is um, I'm sort of looking around now because I might as well do this because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to contribute to as winning. But like, as you <laughs> big sigh. <laughs> but like, as you look around, like what they do is they block line a site with mountains. You know, so the, this is a massive open map, but it's actually broken down into sort of distinct play areas, and it's all captured with like mountain mm. ranges. And it breaks up the line of sight. It keeps the performance, um, you know, at, at a good level. But also, it stops you being able to see right to the other, other end of the level with a sniper rifle. You know, yeah, there's constantly yeah. things which break up the gameplay. Um, so you think the actual level design is, is big, one of the, the yeah, key challenges? Yeah, it's not absolutely. You know, it's, it, there's obviously some fantastic technical stuff that's going on. You know, which I wouldn't want to sort of bore people with um, and, and go into that in too much detail. But like the things you can physically see, like this guy who's attacking me, I'm out of ammo. Uh. I'm out of ammo. <laughs> um, right, he's going to have to get the axe. But in. they're always updating it as well. Like, like the map changes a lot. Um, it updates with different content quite a lot as well. And I can imagine that posts a few challenges, but I, I never thought about the breaking the line of sight thing and stuff. I mean, it's quite common in level design, especially yeah. in games like this, where you don't want someone to have a direct line of sight for too long. No, for sure. No, that's it. You know, and so it, that's like a, something that we'll think about when we when, when we study level design. We always mm -hmm. think about you know what can the players see at any given moment. You yeah. know, what, what are we showing to them? And it's tricky to do with a game like Fortnite, like I say, because the map's massive and open, but that still will have been a process that they would have gone through. You know, when I'm standing here and I look around, what what can I see in this area? And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of iteration. But, you know, it has massive effects on the game and the, and the, and the playing of it. We're getting close, you know. How? For the last six. I don't know how. This is spectacular. <laughs> I think basically because hide in this Rachel's bush. very good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And... I should have just hidden the bush from the start and just basically been carrying us for the last. <laughs> I feel like I'm concentrating too much though. <laughs> I'm just gonna look really angry. Right, Dee, are you in a bush still? I am uh, in the afterlife now. All right. Oh. I looked up <laughs> Here at I a come. different screen and I looked back at I, my my half the screen. I was dead. Oh, I hit him with a car. Well, we're nearly there. Where's he gonna bounce to? There we go. Hey. We what? Oh, we there we go. <laughs> That's how you do it, isn't it? Drops controller. So and how many kills did we all have? 
Chris, not Dean. I don't know where my mind's gone. <laughs> well played, Rachel. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I might have soaked up some bullets that may, you know, that may have killed yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, and my human of, shield. Yeah, 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 and I'm fine with that. Everyone needs to roll in a team. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. So, so, some of us escape goats. Yeah, Lambs scapegoat. to the slaughter. All its sponges, all valuable. So, okay, like, well, let's talk, you know, as we're talking about roles in a team, um, tell us a bit about your roles. So, Rach, concept art. Yeah, so I teach within concept art. Um, concept art is a weird thing, though, because there's so many different, like, avenues to it. Mm. Um, so something I specialise in is, like, stylised characters and creatures, but then within the team we've obviously got, like, realism, stylization, environments, characters. Um, and concept art's a weird thing because you want to teach people to do a little bit of everything. So yeah, they yeah. can be a valuable team member, quite general, but then you want people to have their, like, specialisms as well. And it's always quite tough um, trying to do that, I think, as well. But it's always fun as well. It's really, really fun, fun job. A lot, not, not a lot of people understand what concept art is. Um, I mean, so what but, is, you know, if we're going to go into the games industry today, like, what is the role of concept artist in a game studio? I like to say when you're a concept artist and you come into it that you're, I basically tell my students you're an idea factory. So, yeah, you're, you're an artist, but the main thing you're going to be doing is you're an idea factory. You're coming up with lots of different ideas. Um, that's your job, to solve the problems as well. So you've got to be quite a good um, researcher. Um, you've got to be quite a good problem solver, um, visual thinker, and one thing you've always got to keep in mind is that you're trying to solve a bigger problem as well, so um, it's important to not let your own personal kind of intentions get in the way and think about what's the best for the game. And things like what you've been talking about, like technicalities as well, that's something, you know, as a concept artist, it's literally not just about the art, you've got to think about technical considerations. What, like you said, what can an engine run? As, is that gonna limit like certain textures you do? Um, are you going to have to keep it really simple or really complex? So, yeah, concept art is quite, there's a lot to it and a lot you need to know. And I think um, people just need to be aware that it's not just about the art side of it. You are really a researcher and you've got to be really passionate about it as well. I think something that always surprises me, and again, before I, I kind of got more into the area, mm -hmm. I always assumed concept artists were involved in the beginning of the project. Yeah. You know, they, they, they came up with the, I suppose, artistic direction and the, um, you know, but again, for anybody who hasn't really encountered concept art before, if you've watched something like The Mandalorian or any of the kind of new um, uh, Star Wars shows, I mean, they actually show you some of the concept art at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it's, it's that kind of, trying, I suppose, trying to figure out how things would look. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, they are involved a lot at the start. Of the, yeah, before it's basically when someone's got an idea, but you know, even the actors haven't been considered at that point because they're not sure what it's going to look like. The concept artists are in charge of that. Like, what what could it possibly look like? Not not what should it look like, but what are the possibilities, sort of thing. Um, so they are involved a lot in the pre-production stage, but you can be involved in the production stage as well when things might need changing. Um, especially if you're working games in indie studios, you can actually work on quite a lot of stuff like UI and things like that, marketing things, mm. so you can you can definitely take on a lot more roles in indie studios as well. When you work in um, AAA studios, it tends to be a lot more um, specific, so you might just be a character artist, so you might just be in environments, whereas um, indie stuff, you kind of work on a little bit of everything, yeah. And uh, so Deej, mm. like, yeah, I've referred to a few times as a technical designer. What does a technical designer do? I think... Well, the most important thing, I think, for a technical designer, Chris, is to be really good at Fortnite, as I'm doing <laughs> I think, I think you know, that, that's, that's clearly... Uh... Now, it's, a technical designer is an interesting one. So what I do you know, is essentially design gameplay experiences, um, which is like a hoity-toity way of saying like, things like levels, things like mechanics. You know, so everyone can probably imagine what a level is, uh, you know, space where the gameplay takes place. But when I talk about mechanics, I'm on about like just the smallest little thing that happens in a game. You know, from how a jump feels to how I'm looking at your screen now and you're riding around on that wolf. Like just how <laughs> that feels. How something like you know something that we see a lot in modern games is things like aiming. Mm -hmm. If you just take how aiming works in a game and all the things that have to go into that to make it feel good and to make it work well. So you know, essentially, you know, there's kind of two parts of technical design, and that's the design part where you come up with these ideas, you create design documentation which sort of explains how they work, 
but then the technical bit where you actually make it as well. Thank you for covering me. Whilst I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, and like the technical bit. So I'll come up with stuff and you know, in a nutshell, I come up with stuff and I make it, I prototype it. So we actually make the game elements, the game mechanics, um, you know, and we'll test them and we'll iterate and improve upon them. That's something that we teach everyone from almost day one, that this, this job and this role requires a lot of, you come up with an idea, you make it, you realize that it's terrible. And you, and you improve the idea and you make it again and you make it better. You know, it's called iterative design and you know, it's something that we sort of swear by and you'll be doing a lot of it you know, over the, as both a, you know, an undergraduate student but also just in the industry. It's all about iterative design. Yeah, I think sometimes, I mean, so I, <coughs> I come from a design background myself and I think people sometimes think that your first idea is always going to be your best one. No. And actually, oh, the, yeah. there's all that kind of polishing and, and process that happens afterwards. And yeah, absolutely. I think that's true in art as well. Mm. Yeah, wasn't it like Angry Birds? It was it like the 80th idea of, or 50, <laughs> 50 something, like 50 something idea of, of like eight years and then had a success? Sure. And that's a, and I, what you were saying as well about that idea is like it's what you feel, it's like the experience. That's something that you're getting concept out as well, which is why I was saying it's good to be a researcher because a lot of things like Horizon Zero Dawn is a really good example of. You walk into um, like a, a town or whatever, and yeah, you see a lot of stuff and it looks really cool, but it's how it makes you feel. Um, a lot of it's to do with what you can't see, and that's why mm. when you're a concept artist, you need to understand a lot more than just the visual side of it. You need to understand why something's built in the way it is, or it's a colour that it is. Because um, a lot of it, like you said, in games, it's what you experience, and I think that goes for more than just the you know, the design or the level design or anything tech-wise, it's the whole thing and it coming, even just the mechanics of it, it's how it feels. Like Sea Thieves mm. is a really mm. good example of like, I, I've been watching Twitch streamers lately um, and it's really funny because the duck in real life when a cannonball comes from because <laughs> they feel so immersed in it and yeah, it's the yeah, sound yeah. design and stuff as well. Oh, I think that's absolutely. so important. I mean, I think Sea of Thieves is a really good example of a game where again, it's got those elements of metaverse, right? So I... Mm -hmm. I People go in there. I mean, it's, it's a pirate, for anybody who's not aware, Sea of Thieves is a pirate simulation game. But it's <coughs> people go in there and spend two hours fishing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Meditative. I mean, I <laughs> through the, um, the the lockdowns, I started um, doing a lot of my supervision meetings. So I, I have some PhD students. Um, I don't have them. They work with me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we started doing uh, supervision meetings in Sea of Thieves, and we just go sailing. We yeah. just we just take a boat and we we go for a tour and we go visit an island and we were using that <laughs> as a space to you know somewhere different from like Zoom or Teams just mm -hmm. to meet and chat. Awesome. Um, and it changed the pace of the meeting because again there's I think something that we we do quite naturally um, but we we don't really think about quite often is um, changing the location of a meeting to change the the tone and the tempo of it. Sure. Yeah. So if we want to come up with some ideas, we might go, hey, let's have a lunch meeting. We'll nip out, we'll grab some food, and we'll." Mm -hmm. it, it changes the, the formality of the space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some are like, I feel like you know, sometimes I've been my most creative when I'm talking to people, playing something. You know, like, mm. sort of, you know, if, if I was to sort of sit down when I'm, when I'm trying to come up with new ideas for things or you know, even new ideas for lessons or whatever, if I sort of sit down, it's like, right, brain, think let's be creative i often sort of feel like i hit a kind of dead end but if, if i've got something so just some activity and like you know that that thinking just in that conversation is a bit like now happening in the background just a bit more sort of stimulating sometimes how do we actually run i'm, uh, in, I'm coming to get you in a car press rachel's got it it's fine do you want to get in this car i will uh, yeah 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 i'm it's gonna die good idea. Nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm it's nearly gone you'll be fine That's we're gonna right. make it oh no we might not I'm not we'll sure try. we will. <laughs> really. <laughs> go right, go right. <laughs> oh no. We'll it's not looking right. good for Chris. Does he fall out the car if he dies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's cool. our answer. Let's just get out of the storm <laughs> and then we'll run back and get his uh, yeah. reboot car. Oh, we, it's a circle. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't think you're running back to get me. Yeah, I think he yeah, 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 yeah. leaves. I will. <laughs> leaves yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back. I've got a med kit, it's fine. It's all good. It'll be fine. There we Good go. news, Not everyone, as well. I've, I've, I've got a sniper rifle, so I feel like this one's in the bag <laughs> as well, just for the record. I have two. Oh, right, OK. That's useful. <laughs> I don't think we'll run out of a binocular sniper rifle. There we go. Okay. There you go. Drag jar. The... 
Thank you, right? There we go. <laughs> so, Bopi, that, that thing you were saying about research. Mm -hmm. So what is the, the value of research when you're developing games? Do you want to take this one, Rachel, and start? Or? I was just going <laughs> to say... I, I was going to cut you off. Um. I was just going to say the thing for me, and something, again, we try to get across in concept art, is that even if it's like a super crazy idea, it's like fantasy or alien, whatever, um, it should feel believable. It should be rooted mm. in the real world and it should be grounded. Like something I used to say as an example is, you could be building like this alien world and the buildings are crazy, whatever, but if you put like a mailbox outside, it makes you feel like someone lives there. It makes you feel like it's a real place and that's got a life there and a history and stuff. And I think for me, yeah, that, that believability and just, um, you know, being respectful to the players and depending on what kind of work you're actually doing, you shouldn't just make something up and hope it works and hope people, because the player base are very passionate. And if you do something that doesn't quite agree, you know, they will notice it. It's not going to go missed. Mm. So you have to be quite careful with stuff, especially if you're doing, you know, working on existing IPs, for example, you have to be very careful with that kind of stuff. But I think for me, it's oh, the yeah. believable it's people side. Oh, really passionate about yeah, games yeah. Oh, we've got an AI on our backs, which I cannot aim for. Oh, I'm down. Oh, That's no. It. Right, where That's are you? It. Oh, no. What? <laughs> we've, we've, we've got to. We're, we're done. Yeah. I can't believe you've this done this. Right I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, you probably kill more people crawling <laughs> around than we will like, running So, again, is, is there a button for sprint? Uh, Alt 3. You, oh, yeah, you like push, you, push your analog stick, stick in. The one that you use to control your player, you push oh, that in. Gotcha. Hang in there, right? Oh, that's clever. Yeah, we got you. Right, we're getting shot at, but don't worry. Like I mentioned, sniper rifle. I think if you both res me, it goes quicker. And oh, the yeah? storm is also crawling oh, in, so oh this boy. should be... Oh, jeez. Fun. There, yeah, run, Let's go. Run. Right, give it toes. We've got a car, if you want to get in. Oh, no, oh, I no. just battered you somewhere. That's How fine. did you get a car? Like, you were it dead two seconds ago. It was next ago. to me. <laughs> Pro oh, don't stay in the move. storm. <laughs> oh, oh, oops. Oh, do you know what? I think this is how we got this trouble. And I think I ran over the robot. Yeah, something did start shooting him. It was an AI. I was like, oh no. So I think this thing about believability, right? Mm. I think this this really applies to the metaverse as well. And, and mm -hmm. you know, this idea of suspension of disbelief. Um, that I think if you, you're going to be immersed in the space, if you, you're willing to kind of commit yourself to that space, mm -hmm. it has to be believable. Mm -hmm. And the example I always use for this is, is zombies, right? That, you know, people say, oh, those zombies are really realistic. Well, there's no such thing as a realistic zombie yeah. because zombies don't exist. Don't exist mm. yeah. <laughs> but they can be believable. Sure. And, you know, if, if, you, if you're into, if you're in, into your horror, there's all kind of different ways zombies are. You've got fast zombies, you've got yeah, your slow yeah, zombies. Yeah, yeah. But they all feel believable within that world that's been constructed. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think, is so fundamentally the most important part, right? That it mm -hmm. feels believable in the space, in the world that they've created. Yeah, like this game's got its own. Into I mean, it, this game's nonsense, isn't it? Like, <laughs> with, with all respect, it's not, but it's not, yeah, yeah. but it, it's still like there's a lot that's bound to. You know, normal physics and stuff like you know, and you're playing like a humanoid character, or you know, bipedal character anyway. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you can relate to, and it makes sense within the context of it. What do you think, though? You know, you know um, have you seen some like things that people do in VR where it's just almost so abstract, it's kind of like really different, like where where, oh, where people yeah, are really yeah. small or massive, and like you know, oh, yeah. I, I think that's that's surely more just like a like a, a quick experience. Oh, like, oh, that was weird. You know, but like I you think wouldn't. That's not trying to. That's not trying to create like um, a, uni a metaverse. Or... Yeah, and I think that's one of the differences, right? It, it's it's an experience. It's something to. Uh, you know, it's almost psychedelic, right? It's, sure. It's, it's something to to be perceived, but not something to necessarily believe. Sure. Um, whereas, in this, I, I can accept for the time that I'm here that I am this character. Yeah. Oh, oh, I did one. Yeah, you got someone. I'm just joining Finally. in. Finally. <laughs> well done. Well done. I want this. I'm going to track for another win here. If, if I'm on this again, I'm going to request that I have my chair like six inches away from the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I got se I'll go to a separate room and you can just add me in in post. Like. <laughs> Are you struggling to see the screen? Uh, I, can, I can see a I can see me. I must oh, right. admit, I mean, when, it's, battle, right? when it's split screen, it is like super <laughs> tiny. I'm like, 
<laughs> also, Teej is very old. And, you know, um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, that, that's I'm irrefutable sorry, I'm truth. Really struggling with PlayStation control. <laughs> I'm such a PC player. I'm fine. I'm in my element, me. <laughs> you're doing brilliant. I'm having a good you're time. D- you're despite, despite this obvious handicap of oh, us oh, two oh. next oh, to you. Oh, there's someone next to us. There we go. Well done. There's also someone this way somewhere, I think. I think I'm going to have to get a PlayStation if we do more. If we do more of these, I need to get myself get a PlayStation. Need I need to get a PlayStation. Anyway, just to play Horizon Zero Dawn. What if you Zero just got Dawn? a um, oh, PlayStation controller? Like, and just used a controller on a PC. Yeah, you like, can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let, let's talk about, you know, you mentioned Horizon Zero Dawn. Obviously, that's a massive game. Yes. Why do you think Why do you think that has become so popular? I think, for a start, it's cool. Like, as soon as I heard that there was robot dinosaurs, that was it for me. Yeah, like, I'm obsessed right. with dinosaurs. And um, I think a couple of things. I think... One for me, the, the thing that they did really well was when they showed the gl- gameplay trailer, they really showcased like the game mechanics, and you can actually play it like that. You can actually like slide around, shoot arrows. Like there's no limitations to that, it, and it's really good for that. Yeah, um, yeah. So you weren't kind of like you know sometimes when you play, and it I get why. Feels old, open world, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I know that sometimes you get these things where like you see a game that is. Someone want again? Uh, I'm shooting somebody. Believe it or okay, not. We're okay. We're okay. Oh no, the stars sounds have aligned. With someone's in my sides. I smushed him. Um, you get these games with really cinematic trailers and then it turns out it's like a pixel game Yeah. and you're like oh but that's not what I signed up for for sure Um, and I think just in terms of that believability and you know the research side there's all these cultures within Horizon Zero Dawn and they all live in different places and operate in different ways and it feels real Yeah. like none of it really exists that world doesn't exist but it feels real but it's all the details right I mean I I always say to the students when they're designing uh, game worlds you know, you, you build an environment and it just it feels dead. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you add some like lights on and you add a little bit of litter and, and you know, the fact that somebody hasn't quite trimmed their, their their hedge. Yeah. And suddenly it looks like like people are there. It's yeah. that like adding the life into it. Making that it? yeah, making that world look lived in. Yeah. That's a skill as well though. You know what I mean? And and, and what you just said, Chris, about like the way that people make levels is they will do that, you know, first they'll make the space of the level. And they'll also talk about just like all the different areas someone will visit. And that detail, making it feel like it's lived in, that comes with iteration, it comes over time, mm. you know, it doesn't just happen straight away. Oh no, I'm down. Oh no. Oh, There's no. a guy next to me. There's a guy next to me? <laughs> oh, I just pinged it, I think. Ah, I don't know. He's in this bush. Right. Now, nah, trifle, don't fail me now. Pinged it on I'm your just map. trying to Thanks. get the, the gun I want. No. Oh, I was stood behind him all the time. <laughs> Getting close. Chris, help. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've got some of my own issues, you know. I'm reloading this after every shot, is it? That sort of sniper rifle, it might be actually. Right, whoever's up here shooting at me it should be ashamed. Because they've been doing it for ages. Right now I'm down. Oh, this might be it. This might be it. This might be it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, with dig, with dignity, I'm gonna hide under the car <laughs> <laughs> and just let this play out. This is your usual way. Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just let it blow. What was that game that you just spend the hot try as long as possible to hide in a bush? That was Fortnite. That's that's, <laughs> that's how I famously got one of my wins years ago. Was hide in a bush, and then I shotgun the last person. <laughs> uh, they were all building something, and I, I couldn't quite figure it out. I mean, some, a game that does that really well is Outlast. Yeah. Like, you can't do anything but hide. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I think yeah. that's a really cool concept. Like, I love that game. I think it, they've done that so well. I, I don't know. Who, who am I game reviving game. at the moment? Both of us, really. We're both Oh, down, right, so. okay. Not anymore, I'm not. Not anymore. You're on your own now. Like, you just got to... There's Time five people shine. left. Visualise the win. I'm saving somebody. Is that you? No, it's just a random person. Go drop them in the go go, go drop them in the fog. <laughs> drop them in the storm. That's a good play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a what, oh my days! Because that's move. what heroes do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should be able to get that guy. Get him. Get him. Yep. Oh, oh my. A couple more. One more shot, and it should be down. There you go. There's what you were one more person. Oh that person God. winning. It's one on one. Them, yep. Got this. 
Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, you're oh. out of ammo. You're going to have to get close to him or get more ammo because you're out. You've got 20 bullets. I'll do it the old-fashioned way. You the should pickaxe. be able to get him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, days. This is so tense. <laughs> On the edge of our seat. Oh, no, you're going to run out of bullets. Give him the business. Oh. Give him the business. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to change pickaxe. There we are. Come here. <laughs> get him. Get him. You've got him. You've got him on the back foot. How is this person missing so much? No! <laughs> <laughs> so close. Number one in our hearts. Right, on that note, I'd like to thank our amazing guests. I hope you've enjoyed the game. Uh, whether you're watching or listening, we hope you enjoyed our first level of detail episode and we encourage you to post your comments and share. Um, until next time. Thanks very much. Cheers. I'm gonna get killed next time. <laughs> <laughs>